Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our uh, first meeting for 2010. Uh, tonight, the 15th of March, it's great to see you all back again, and uh, we're looking forward to a, a really good uh, year with our little society. It gives me a great deal of pleasure, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce Mr. Colin Peacock. Colin is uh, grandson of the of the owners or the, the people who, who started the firm Peacock and Masters, who uh, had uh, very successful business in, in, in Charles Street in Maylands and, and, and earlier than that in Peninsula Road. Uh, I'll leave Colin to tell you uh, all about that in his story. Colin's father and I uh, were acquainted in sailing uh, in the late 1940s. Colin's father went to Sydney and, and won a, a sailing championship on Sydney Harbour and, and a couple of years later uh, I was able to do the same thing. So and Colin's father uh, uh, was a foundation member of the South Perth Yacht Club, uh, which later became South of Perth and moved over to the other side of the river. But in the, those uh, early days the, the South Perth Yacht Club was on the freeway side of the river and uh, I remember very well in about 1947 going to a, uh, uh, an auction of, of an army hut in Melbourne Army Camp and uh, South Perth Yacht Club, Collins' father, Mel Peacock, was one of the delegation from that club who had 200 pound and were able to purchase one of these uh, army huts. Uh, Mayland Jock Club unfortunately didn't have £200 and we had to wait another year before we had enough money and then we did purchase one of those buildings too. But look, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please, I'd like you to welcome Colin Peacock. Thank you, Colin. Thanks, Terry. Look, uh, Colin, uh, Colin Peacock is my, my name. I'm Colin Thomas Peacock. I'm the, the fourth Thomas. In the, in the peacocks um, in, in, in Australia. The first one was born in England, Thomas Peacock, came out, uh, he was born in 1844, came out to Melbourne um, and s set up a, a, a rag business in, in Melbourne. Um, his eldest son was Thomas Edwin Peacock, which is the one that came to Perth, and I'll explain that later. Um, and then there was my, my father, who was Melville Thomas Peacock, and then myself, uh, Colin Thomas, my son, he's the fifth, is Brett Thomas, and I have a grandson, um, Bradman Thomas. So there's six uh, in the line at the moment. Um, but anyway, just relating to the, the peacocks and maylands, which is you know, what you're mostly interested in, um, we, we've got to track ourselves back a little bit, and we really track ourselves back to the masters, um, this is Samuel Masters and Ellen Masters. Now, they, um, they, uh, he was a butcher uh, in Melbourne, he had quite successful, had five butcher shops. But we're, we're currently going through a bit of an economic crisis. Well, back in the 1890s, there was also an economic crisis. We don't learn very often by these things. Um, they got into some strife in, in Melbourne. Uh, so he decided to um, pack up his family and come to Western Australia. So there was the masters had five girls. So the five girls came to Perth. My uh, grandfather, it's Thomas Edwin Peacock, was interested in one of the girls. So he um, he came across. They they came across in the the 1890s, 95, somewhere in there. Um, he, in his early days, he was a butcher um, and he was on a ship before, before he was married and they used to cruise around the coast to Western Australia and uh, 
he, uh, the story goes that he was, they were shipwrecked up on the north coast and um, there was only two of them that got ashore but while they were walking back to the, the town, wherever it was, I'm not exactly sure, but one of them was taken by a crocodile crossing a creek and he was the only survivor of that particular ship. Um, it was a sailing ship in those days. Anyway, he, he saw Perth, he liked it, so he decided to come to Perth. Um, my grandfather, who was interested in, in one of their daughters, he came over and uh, they decided that they were going to get married. The daughter, one of the daughters, Ada. Uh, they went back to Melbourne in 1900 and they were married in Melbourne. They decided to stay in Melbourne for, uh, I think it was about 12 months. Um, and then I think there was a, the, the, the master's family were very close and Ada decided she wanted to come back to Perth. So they came back to Perth. Um, the first job they did was looking after a piggery that I think Samuel Masters was out at Beachborough. They lived on this uh, piggery for 12 months. Um, disaster struck, some swine flu went through and all the pigs died. So they gave that away. They then moved back to Guildford Road, just over here. Um, they had a weatherboard house. Um, they stayed there for a, only a brief time. But it was at that time um, they, uh, they were very involved in the Churches of Christ organisation and this is where the two of them met in Melbourne, that's Tom and Ada, at Collingwood Church of Christ. Um, they then, when they came here, they went to Lake Street Church of Christ, which was the head office of the Church of Christ in Western Australia. They then decided to um, have some church meetings in their home over here in Guildford Road. And that was the start of the Maylands Church of Christ. They actually started and then they ended up in 8th Avenue. Just, they ended up buying some property off the Baptist, I think, just up here in 8th Avenue. And they're still there. Um, the building is still there. So after that, after a brief time in Guildford Road, they then moved to Central Avenue East, which is, I think it was number 34. And next door was the Masters family, and they were in 34. The Peacocks were in 34, the Masters, are, I don't know what the number was, whatever it is, 36 or whatever. Um, but these properties ran right, they ran from Central Avenue right down to Peninsula Road. And it was in the backyard of the Masters where they set up this um, early flock factory. But just retracting a bit, my grandfather, um, this, this guy here, this is Thomas Edwin Peacock. He, he is the one that came over. He was a hatter by trade. So he decided to go into, in Perth, where he was here to set up a hat shop. Now, it was during, because his father in Melbourne was in the textile recycling business, he decided that when he was in, during his lunchtime, he'd go around, because in those days, you just didn't go and buy a suit. You'd have to go to a tailor, and it would have to be made from a piece of cloth, and they'd cut it out and fit you. So there was a lot of wasted fabric, a lot of scrap materials. So what he did, he ended up buying all this material, and they would then bring it back to Peninsula Road, and they would then sort it into colours, into whether it was a worsted or woolens, different grades of wool, and it was then bailed up and sent back to England. But what happened, there was a lot of pieces of fabric that were not suitable for going back to England. And this is what they used to make flock out of. So they imported a machine to chop up the, the rag and that uh, filling was used in those days in upholstering and in mattress making. Most mattresses were made, this is before, in the spring. So this is, that's how they got involved through the um, collection of this textile waste. Um, now, the, the factory, um, I think it was round about 
No, I've got some notes here. I should be looking at my notes. In 1904, they moved to Central Avenue. Samuel Masters, that's this guy here, he had a butcher shop in Perth, in William Street, by the way. He died in uh, 1909. And the business was sold because it was called Peacock and Masters in the early days. Um, but the, the Masters share was sold to my grandfather in 1909 when he died. But they still kept the name going. They purchased their first flock machine from England in 1912. Uh, in 1919, the Peacocks moved from Central Avenue to Fourth Avenue. There's a, a big home there, number I think it's number six, overlooking the river there. Um, the Flock Factory still stayed in Peninsula Road because it was the, that was the backyard of these properties. Back in uh, about 1923. A spark from a gas gas producing plant because the, the machinery they didn't have uh, electricity uh, available at that, those days, or it was hard to get. And they they used to produce gas, and then the gas would be used to fire the the engines that turned these machines. Now, in 1923, a spark from this thing caused the fire. So that was that was the reason for the fire in Peninsula Road was actually the spark out of the. Um, the gas producing. In 1924, the factory moved to 33 Charles Street in Maylands. In fact, it's, it's still around there, actually. It's, um, it's been turned into a U-rent type building. The, um, I've got a few old photographs here. There's not a lot, but I've got more. But that's, that's, that shows you how it's a bit hard to see, I imagine, but there was a bit of a flood. This is Charles Street's back here. The Weaver's Boot Factory would have been over here, but you can see it's all just bush. There's no, very few houses around. That's a shot of the, the early factory. The office was here. There was an old house on the corner, and they put these buildings up at the, up at the back. But it was just bush. This is Home Street or Cox Street. And then Charles Street's running, running along here. So they're, they're now in... They're now in... Um, in Charles Street in Maylands. The, the property in, in Palinch Road is finished. Or sold. Now, back in um, my my father and my uncle <coughs> took over in about 19, 1927, um, they took over running the factory. So, it was my uncle Les and my father, Melville. Um, my father was an engineer, he did his time at Tomlinson Steel and my, <coughs> my uncle Les, he did a, a business course at, I think it was Stott's Business College or something. Um, he was um, interested in going into the ministry for the Churches of Christ. In fact, he ran the um, Bassendine Church of Christ for a couple of years. But he just found it wasn't, didn't suit him, so he ended up coming into the business. Um, this is a shot of my, my father was very interested in, in lacrosse. Um, this is a shot presented to Melville Peacock from the members of the Maylands Lacrosse Club, 1927, Premiers. So lacrosse must have been a little bit more popular than it is today. But uh, this is my father just here. Um, but he, back in those days, it was just the depression was, was just starting. And he went to Melbourne, he was in the state lacrosse team as well. And part of the thing was they did tours, factory tours. And he went to Holden's Motor Body Works. And there was rows and rows of these spring machines that were just idle. Because the, 
the downturn in the industry over the depression. So when he got back to Perth, he wrote to them asking if they wanted to sell any of these machines. And they wrote, in fact, I've still got the letter at home where they <coughs> wrote back and said, yes, we don't mind selling you one. So we were the first to make coil springs in Western Australia. Um, and from there that led on to making inner spring mattress, the, the centre part of the, because inner spring was just coming in. And we were the first company in Western Australia to make inner spring for the, the mattress industry. My, my father, as Terry mentioned, was also very keen on yachting. In fact, it was his father, when Dad was about 12, bought him the first boat, because they were in, in um, Central Avenue, and the Mayland Yacht Club was just down the bottom of the hill. Um, so he got very interested in yachting at a very young age. He was responsible for introducing the Sharpie um, boats into Western Australia. Thank you. Um, Dad was also very keen on uh, VJs, which he won an Australian championship, as Terry's mentioned, on Sydney Harbour. In fact, that boat, CB, is currently in the museum down in, in uh, the Maritime Museum down in Fremantle. And the CB, the C stands for Colin, and the B stands for Bruce, which is my brother. Uh, and that's how it was named. But the actual trophy he won is down, down there as well. Um, but he, was, he went on to go into 14 foot uh, skiffs, into 16 foot skiffs and um, in fact in 1956 he actually was a, an, an Olympic official in Melbourne. Um, he was one of the officials. I've still got his badge uh, and his blazer um, in our little museum at work. So, um, so he was very involved in those sports but So we sort of moved on and they, now my, my brother and myself, we started work in, um, I'm an accountant by profession, my brother worked at Hatfields um, in the drawing office, we both, the business was sort of, sort of heading down a little bit, we only had three people on the staff in those days and um, we decided I chucked my job in. I was out at West Australian Transformers as an assistant accountant. He was up at the drawing office at um, Hatfields and we decided to uh, give it a go. So we went and worked over here in Charles Street in Maylands. And we gradually started to build it back up again. We diversified into a number of other products, mainly involved in the bedding and upholstering industry. Um, um, and I started in 19, <coughs> 1966, so I've been there, what, 40, 43 years now. So the years roll by. And we've just gradually over the years um, built, built the business up. Um, and we finally, um, we really outgrew grew the property out there. Um, we, we, when we, as you can see, when we went there, there was all bush. But towards the end there, we had, well, there was all houses all around us. And if our, if our machines got out of balance, the, these big rag teasing machines, the place would vibrate and the lady next door, her cups used to fall off the, fall off the, the, the shelf. So it was getting a, bit, getting a bit awkward there. So we decided to move out to Kewdale. And we, we, got a, we got four acres of land under the Industrial Lands Development Authority and uh, we, we ended up moving out there about 19, 1970, 73. Um, it's about 73. So we, we basically moved out of Maylands in 1973. We're currently out in Kewdale. Um, we've got 15 acres of land out there. Um, we currently employ through the Peacock Group, about 200 people, um, and turn over about 90 million. And that's right throughout Australia because we've got branches, we now have branches um, across Australia. We've got a bedding factory in Perth here. We make inner spring mattresses. We've, <coughs> through a, an associate joint venture, we've got a bedding factory in Victoria. We have one in South, in Adelaide, and one in, in Hobart. 
On the upholstering side, we've got branches in every state where we distribute uh, component parts into the upholstering industry, but we don't actually make you know, chairs or anything, but we supply the vinyl and all the bits and pieces. But we've got branches in every state of Australia. Um, so I think that just about covers the, um, the peacocks in, in, in Maylands. Um, I may have missed something there, but um, if there's any questions, yeah, folks, if fire, anyone fire them has out. any questions, please feel free to, uh, to ask Colin. He said he's quite prepared. Uh, Ross, you're uh, ready to hand up. Did you sell the place in Charles Street? Or? It was sold. Yeah. It was sold. Um, I got a feeling it was sold to Bowen's furniture factory, but they never actually moved in. They must have resold it to someone who's turned it into a like a used store, where you can go and they've divided it all up into little areas. Where you can go in and store your goods if you want to. Yeah. But. Um, there's a, uh, oh, one thing I forgot, my father was in the aero club. Um, he used to fly tiger moths. And I've got his, um, his flying license here, his pilot's license, um, 1933. And I've got his logbook as well, because they used to fly tiger moths out at, down at Maylands Aerodrome. So he was quite a. In fact, he had a, I think he had his pilot license before he had a car license. The Peacocks were one of the first car... My grandfather had one of the first cars in Maylands. This, this is a photograph of the, the old lady, Grandma Masters, my grandmother, and her four...